Hi friends, welcome to Book a Day for Little Learners. Friends, we have another story that is in the cat or Dr. Seuss family. It's a story that has the main character, Cat in the Hat. And this is Why Oh Why Are Deserts Dry? It's by Tish Rabe and it's illustrated by Aristes Ruiz and Joe Mathau. So they're using the character that Dr. Seuss created, the Cat in the Hat. Why oh why are deserts dry? I'm the cat in the hat, and today is the day that we're off to see deserts. Let's leave right away. You may think that deserts are empty and bare, but you'll be surprised by the things we'll find there. Insects and lizards, flowers and snow. Want to see for yourself? Buckle up and let's go. Look, they have some more Dr. Seuss-like characters. Is that thing one and thing two? Why are deserts dry? I'll be glad to explain. There are very few clouds above them to bring rain. And without clouds, there's nothing to block the sun's light or to hold the heat in so it gets cold at night. The air is so dry, any rain deserts get dries up right away so they do not stay wet. Without water, surviving the deserts is rough. Plants, insects, and animals need to be tough. All living things need to have water, so how do they live where it's dry? I will show you right now. Desert plants must find water. Some have ways to store it. Roots spread out to find it or reach down for it. Shallow roots of this cactus pull water through them. The cactus then stores it inside of its stems. You see that? The... There's a tree in the desert that's called the mesquite. Its roots reach for water that's down 40 feet. There's a town in Mesquite, uh, in Texas called Mesquite. Obviously named after the trees. Look how far down it goes, that they go down to get water. See, there's a water that far down. The Sonoran Desert is where we will find a very big cactus that's one of a kind. It's called the Segura, and I've been told it can grow to be over 200 years old. Sawara, it's pronounced. There's no guh sound in it, even though there's a guh in it. Sawara. A cactus you see has deep pleats in the skin, in its skin, but they expand when the water flows in. It soaks up the water and then quickly swells. Like a sponge, it stores water in some of its cell cells. The sharp spines protect it. Just how do they do it? They make sure some animals won't try to chew it because it's full of liquid, right? Water, and the animals in the desert want that water. And so if they chewed it, that would ruin the cactus's ability to live. So that's what all those spines, the prickly things are for. This Gila woodpecker knows very well that a cactus will serve as the perfect hotel. That's where he's gonna live. She pecks a small hole and then slips inside. It's cool and it gives her a safe place to hide. Because remember, she's a bird so she can go way up high. When she's ready to leave, well, I have little doubt someone else will move in after she's moved out. Look who moved in, an owl. I like it when some cactuses, they grow flowers on them. This one has them at the top. I think those are so pretty. How do insects get water? What some of them do is get water that's inside the plants that they chew. These desert insects are honeypot ants. All year long, they collect the sweet nectar from plants. They store it inside them, and then they can feed it to ants who are hungry whenever they need it. The Namib Desert gets rain rarely, and yet fog comes from the sea and makes everything wet. Here, the fog basking beetle has a way to survive, getting water it needs to help it stay alive. It tilts its abdomen up. That's this part, so it's going up. Water droplets soon slide down its body and into its open mouth. So the water's here and then it goes up and it's like right into its mouth. And so, so you can see the close up of these little ones. See how they have like their abdomen up? Animals differ in the food that they eat and the ways they keep cool in the dry desert heat. 
In the daytime, small animals stay underground. Later on, when it's cooler, they move above ground. So it's kind of like if we lived in a hot place, we stayed inside while it was really hot until the sun went down or it was a little bit cooler. Where I live, you go out early in the morning if you have to do yard work before the sun really kind of heats up the um, at the ground level. Or you go out kind of later in the evening when, again, the sun has gone down and it's a little bit cooler. You also can stay in shade. That helps. Or wear a big sun hat. This cute fennec fox's furry soled feet help him walk on hot sand. His big ears let out heat. Kangaroos lick their arms to help cool off their skin. Then each digs a hole in the ground and climbs in. I have never heard either of those things about kangaroos. Do you remember the other animal we read about in January? We read about polar bears and polar bears also have fur on their feet. It's not for the hot sand, it's for the cold snow and ice. We asked this lizard how he spends his days. Each morning he's warmed by the sun's gentle rays. By midday it's hotter and it's time to hide. He slips into his burrow and goes deep inside. Not very big, is it? In the late afternoon, he's back in the sun. It's not as hot now and the day is almost done. Then he's back in his burrow to sleep through the night. He'll be up with the sun just as soon as it's light. Hawks, eagles, and vultures fly high in the air. They stay off the ground. It's much cooler up there. Kangaroo rat never drinks, but she eats lots of seeds. The water inside them is all that she needs. Can you imagine that, not needing water? Road runners can fly, but they usually run. They catch lizards and snakes in the hot desert sun. The Sahara Desert, geographers say, is almost as big as the whole USA. Here, the crowned sand, sand grouse flies high in the sky, miles and miles to find water. And I'll tell you why. His babies are thirsty and waiting for him. So when he finds water, he quickly flies in. He soaks his feathers until they are wet. This water is all that his babies will get. They drink from his feathers, which dry soon, and then he must take to the sky to find water again. He's taking care of his babies. Look, they just like eat it right off his, I don't know, lick it, drink it. I'm not sure how they get it. Right off the feathers. Out here in the desert, when winds start to blow, there are few plants to help hold the sand down. And so the wind blows the sand, which forms into dunes, it makes shapes in the sand like these crescent moons. See, this is a good illustration of how it's high and then, so the sand, the wind blows it this way, but then this, the wind isn't blowing that direction. So there's not, it's like a steep drop off. What's this nomad wearing? It's called a burnous. It protects him from sun. It's long and it's loose. People called nomads spend their whole lives here. They move place to place and keep moving all year. In the Mojave Desert, plants bloom, grow, and die, but they leave seeds behind in the ground, and that's why when it rains, these seeds burst into flowers so bright. There's a rainbow of colors, a beautiful sight. They will not live long, but before it is over, there are lilies, primroses, sunflowers, owl, clover. Sunflowers stay open for only one day. Hummingbirds drink their nectar and then fly away. In the shimmering heat of the sun's burning glare, you might think you see something that's not really there. This is called a mirage. It's a bit like a dream. Things you think you are seeing are not what they seem. When you get a bit closer, things fade out of sight. They were not there at all. It's a trick of the light. It's a dry, dusty desert. If you suddenly see something green up ahead, like some plants or a tree, this is called an oasis. Where these plants are growing, somewhere in the ground, there is water that's flowing. When you see an oasis, friends, in the desert, you would be very happy. Some deserts are hot in the sun's burning light, 
but the temperature falls and it gets cold at night. Then the world comes alive with owls, foxes, and bats, coyote and rabbits, mice, deer, and rats. Nocturnal animals come out and soon they search to find food by the light of the moon. Before the sun rises, they all disappear. You would think all the animals never were there, never were here. Now, not all deserts are hot. The next place we'll go is the Gobi, and here we will find ice and snow. This back-trained camel is happy to meet you. Some camels have one hump, back trains have two. If he goes a long time without eating or drinking, the humps on his back start steadily shrinking. They're not filled with water, but instead contain fat. When he can't eat or drink, he keeps going on that. I filled up my bathtub and filled up my sink. That's about at one time what a camel can drink. That is a lot, friends. He can drink 30 gallons of water and then he can go a whole week before he drinks again. So that means he needs 30 gallons of water a week. Antarctica is the largest desert of all. The air is so cold here that rain does not fall. This desert is covered with ice and with snow. The ice never melts here and freezing winds blow. It is dark in the winter and cold through the year. Though scientists visit, no people live here. So they have no actual culture on the continent of Antarctica. Penguins have a way to survive the cold weather. They get close to each other and huddle together. If they, if the dads are staying with the eggs, then the eggs stay on their feet and they protect those as well. Today you've seen things that few people will see and I'm so happy you saw them with me. A desert, it's true, is a harsh habitat, but I hope you've discovered it's much more than that. No day in a desert is ever the same, and once you've been there, you are glad that you came. Have you been to a desert? I haven't been to any of the ones I that they talked about, so I think maybe I have not been to a desert yet. I definitely want to add that to my list of things to do. Friends, I hope you learned a lot about deserts. I feel like I learned a lot about deserts, and I hope you enjoyed this story that was told by the cat in the hat. I will see you tomorrow for another story.